Hi, you are again with Volleyball Explained podcast and our edition about the Italian league. Here are Roni, who is in Spain, our Cuban expert, our Italian expert, Nicola, and I'm Bogdan, the Bulgarian non-expert on Italian volleyball. Uh, tough time, second wave of COVID-19 and many postponed matches in the Italian Super Lega. That's why we called uh, this episode of our podcast, Italian Super Lega, Pandemico Pandemonium. Uh, some of the matches uh, are scheduled and we're going to start with the eight rounds. Uh, of course, we're going to comment as, as, uh, as always uh, on overall topics, but also in, in topics uh, uh, linked to specific matches. And uh, the eighth round was um, one of the one of the rounds that with mostly matches played. So uh, so uh, in this round we had Modena Lube zero to three, very interesting match at least in my opinion. I'm going I'm going to uh, tell you some some words a little bit later on the, on this one. Milano Perugia uh, was one of the first matches postponed due to COVID and. Uh, This match will be played uh, uh, on 25th of November, which I'm not I'm not uh, totally sure if it's going to be after or um, before uh, the publication of this episode. So this is uh, this is not uh, not not sure for now. But uh, the other match, uh, which was not played from this round, was between the, the teams of Ravenna and uh, Verona. Uh, which will be played on 9th of December. Piacenza Padova 3-1. Cisterna Trento with the uh, the very last match until now, which have been which has been played by Trento 1-3 uh, win for uh, Trento and Vibo Monza 3-1. And I believe Nicola would uh, would like to start with 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 Trento on this round. Yeah, uh, <laughs> thank you. Well, it was Trento's first game after they qualified for the Champions League, beating the Dino Moscow in the preliminary. So everyone was guessing if they could bring the good mood into the Italian League too. Uh, Cisterna once again was without uh, a starting opposite. And once again, Stvark, the Canadian middle blocker, played in that position. Um, Trento won the first two sets pretty easily, thanks to great serves. Actually, the first very three points of the games were three aces by Nimir. And in addition, they were on point also in counterattacks. Um, everything seems to go smoothly for Lorenzetti's side in the first two sets. Then in the third, uh, Kovac, Boban Kovac, uh, uh, Cisterna's coach, made some tactical adjustments, uh, moving Zvark back as a middle blocker and Sabinin Cabuto as an opposite. Uh, the new lineup gave Cisterna more balance, actually. Uh, they lifted the level of their serve, uh, putting Trento's reception, especially Lucarelli, under fire, and so controlling pretty easily Trento's attack with their blocks. The fourth set was a roller coaster. Um, Trento started strong, then piled up an incredible number of mistakes. There were 11 by the end of the game, so basically half of the point of Cisterna were Trento mistakes. Uh, at a certain point in the set, Cisterna was so leading 22-18. I wouldn't say without knowing how, because they actually was playing the game, but they were up for four points. And it seemed to be the, the usual pattern for Trento. But finally, I would say something clicked. And thanks to Koya Tax, uh, once again, Abdelaziz served and Podrashen in blocks. They finished the game on an 8-2 run uh, to win the set 26-24 and secure um, the three-point victory. Uh, that's important because maybe for the first time this year, Trento showed the strength they needed to overcome a point deficit in the final moments of the set. Uh, early this season, it was exactly the opposite. Uh, Trento blown up uh, a five, four points lead many times. And you maybe remember Bogdan, the second set against Verona, or uh, Ronnie the fourth against Perugia. <laughs> This time they didn't, and especially because other than Abdelaziz, both Koi and Podrashanin uh, shown up. And even Lucarelli showed glimpses of the player everyone is expecting to see, especially in attack. On Cisterna's side, Kevin Tilly 
played what I think is his best game so far, uh, while Randazzo was pretty inconsistent. And that's a big deal for, for Cisterna, because when Randazzo play at an acceptable level, they could win the set if it sinks, uh, especially in reception and make silly mistakes in attacks everything will be very difficult for Cisterna. Probably starting for the next round, finally Cisterna will have Sabi as an opposite. So we'll see how Cisterna's side will turn their season. How, how do you say, by the way, the Bulgarian setter, Georgi Seganov, the setter of Cisterna? Uh, it, uh, it, he played uh, uh, following the the flow of the game. I mean, it, it wasn't that, that bad in my opinion, but uh, at a certain point, uh, Cistana reception wasn't that good. And he did uh, what the opposite time expected. <laughs> so it didn't do anything special, but it was mm, consistent in the set, uh, uh, Cistana won. He, he played his game. I mean, uh, no, no, nothing to say about it, nothing to, to underline in my opinion. but. A little bit later, we can also comment on the situation with COVID in Trento because it's very interesting for the for the match uh, which is scheduled uh, in the next for Trentino because they have uh, both setters, Janelli and also the reserve setters with uh, with COVID quarantine now, and uh, it's very interesting the the question uh, which uh, which player is going to be the setter in the in the next match, but we can uh, do it a little bit later. I would like to say some uh, words uh, on the match between Modena and Lube. Uh, at the time of recording now, I almost uh, have forgotten that I have watched this match. It was uh, a little bit, a little bit uh, too uh, too far in the past, almost. So, even though this match uh, ended zero to three to Lube, it was a very interesting and very even. All the sets were very even. Uh, I'm going to talk maybe a little bit strange more for Modena than Lube because we all know that Lube uh, has quality players. But Modena in this game uh, showed something which was not typical for them and actually improved their game in comparison to, uh, to previous games. Karlicek played as an outside hitter, not as an opposite like uh, in uh, uh, the matches before. And he uh, gave the team a little bit of a stability. Vettori was better also than in previous matches. But um, uh, I believe that in the third set, they were leading something like 23 to or 22, 19 or 23 to uh, 20. Uh, Gianni made a double substitution of, for uh, having uh, three, uh, three attackers in front row with uh, with the reserve setter, the, the young, uh, the youngest, uh, the younger player, Paolo Poro uh, and Luis Luis Estrada. Uh, but I believe this was too risky, and so, and so, I believe that Luba made um, as four or five points in a row, and they won the set. So it. It was a little bit too risky. They are two very young players, so not that experienced, and I believe that that was too risky. But but overall, Modena played better in this match, and uh, I believe that uh, that um, uh, with with Karlicek as a outside hitter close to the setup, plus uh, of course uh, uh, improved Vettori, and of course with uh, Christensen and and uh, Grebenikov, which I can. Uh, even uh, put in any doubt, they they can can uh, get you even better in the in the championship. Yes, I think uh, this is a uh, this is the this was the interesting match of the round. Uh, just because uh, Modena uh, until that game, uh, when they lose in in home in home court, they always win a set. So in my mind, I, I remember that I bet in that uh, uh, at that game, and I wasn't sure if uh, Lube could could have won 3-0 because they they were in a in a really good shape every match, even with Milano, who was uh, uh, who is actually the 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 third the third uh, team in, right now. Uh, they sweep uh, easily. So uh, 
I say, well, maybe, maybe if they play re really perfect in a hard court like the Palapanini Arena, they can they can take it 3 0. But uh, as usual, Modena play really good in, in home court, even when they don't have that uh, strong team like they have uh, a year before. But uh, like Bodan uh, pointed out, uh, that change with Porro over Christensen and Estrada over Vettori was uh, was the the crucial in the in the last set. So that uh, permit to uh, Juan Torrena and company take advantage of that first in the defense and then uh, on the serve. So yeah. Uh, even though Paolo Porro, uh, which uh, is a young and promising uh, setter, alongside uh, Tommaso Rinaldi and uh, what's your guy again, Micheletto, forms the victory of uh, Italy in that uh, fantastic squad you under 21 for the next year World Championship. Uh, even with that, I don't think they are ready enough to engage a team like uh, Chivitanova. It's normal. You are, you are playing with, with versus guy who have uh, like 10 years of experience and a high yeah. level volleyball. And that, that, for me, that was a mistake by Gianni. You can, you, you can if, you, if you want to win a set, you can, you, you, you can do that for in the, from the perspective view of, of any coach who is experienced in, in, in this level. So yeah, I think the other games when, when normal, I have uh, to point it out that Viva Valencia is playing uh, a really good volleyball. They deserve to be in the first, the first uh, places of the, of, the, of the table. I think they are now what six or five five plays. They're, they're tied with Milano at the yes. third. So so yeah, uh, actually in the eighth round they they beat Monza, who has been a team with up signs with, with sorry with up and downs, and uh, the other match well yeah, you you say that Trentino beat uh, Cisterna. And Piacenza is start to is starting to uh, turn their their engines. I don't know if it has to do with the fact that Jerezuelo is not playing more. <laughs> too, but yeah, I cannot laugh because I know the details. Uh, Jerezuelo had a medical uh, problem. Uh, some people say it was a. Uh, a hair attack. I don't know. Uh, just rumors. Mm -hmm. But uh, is it? It isn't easy to digest this this new. Even though that uh, the 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 other setter that that they hire is uh, is really good in my opinion, better than Jerezuelo in doing what he's supposed to do. Setting nothing else. You have the attackers. You have the outside hitters like Russell, the opposite like Grosser. You don't need a offensive player like Jerezuel to to score more points. So, at the beginning of the season, I wonder why Jerezuel to to play alongside with this guy. They have the power that they need to to be to be good. Why another one? So yeah, in my opinion, uh, Bernardi has uh, doing. Uh, his adjustment, even though it's not perfect, is enough to compete. I, let's see if in the second and is the, in the return, no? they they have a better uh, a better um, champion, championship. Sorry. But by, by the way, uh, in terms of Paolo Poro, I believe that his brother is also playing. He's in the U18, I believe, Luca Poro, and but his player is a, is a hitter. Outside hitter or opposite? I'm not sure. I, Who? I think outside hitter. The, the brother of Paolo Poro. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I don't yeah. know. I, yeah, I, yeah, I only call... know the, the big three that are Rinaldi, Micheletto, and yeah, Porro, maybe. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if there are other kids that yeah. can complement those, those, uh, those three. Well, 
Well, okay, maybe we can go to the next two rounds and we can uh, we can get them uh, at once because only two matches were played in the ninth and the tenth round uh, due to COVID, and uh, that were the matches between Padova Milano three two as for the guests uh, from Milano and uh, Piacenza Monza one to three. Even though Piacenza turned the engines, Monza beat uh, beat them in this uh, in this match. Uh, it was a little bit uh, a roller coaster match. So I'm going just to tell you that Luca Cisterna from the ninth round will play on the second of December, Perugia Modena on the third of December, Trento Vibo possibly on 25th of November, Verona Piacenza on 16th on the 16th of December, and Monza. Uh, and Ravenna, this, uh, this match is not scheduled so far. From the 10th round, Modena, Verona, Perugia, Ube, Padova, Ravenna, not scheduled so far. Trento, Milan, will be played on 17th of December, and Vibu Cisterna on the 16th of uh, December. I'm just going to, to uh, say some words for the match between uh, Piacenza and Monza. One, two, three for the guests. Both teams which are playing not consistently, uh, still, I believe that Monza has a very decent squad, and uh, especially because of the fact that this, uh, they have this uh, possibility to uh, to change uh, outside hitters with uh, Lanza, uh, Javornok, and also Marco Sedlacek. Uh, and uh, especially in this match, uh, the efficiency of uh, the opposite of Piacenza Gozer was very low, and I believe that was the main reason for it. Chance of to this match. Well, if you want, guys, I can could comment on Padova and Milano, the, the other game, the only game played for the ninth round, because I watch it, and it turned out to be a pretty interesting game, uh, more for the fact that it went to the tiebreak and then for the quality of the game itself. Uh, actually, it looked like the two teams decided before the game to win two sets each, while in the meantime the other team could rest because Milano won comfortably the first and the third set, and Padova secured the second and the fourth uh, very easily uh, as well. And, then, and none of the teams were attacking at a high level. And Padova received better, but Milano scored more blocks, especially with, with Mar, who get five by the end of the game, that I think is probably his best performance ever in, in Italy. Um, Padova attacks went better when the young uh, Jakob Wattolo, and we already talked about him, is one of the young sensation in, in our league, uh, was subbed in for Sebastiano Milan, a veteran who wasn't playing pretty well. And the tie break itself was a, a roller coaster as well. Um, Mar started serving with Milano down 2-1, to one, and then, then with his side up 6-3, to three, I, I guess. Uh, Pado answers back, but then tends to piano, uh, also serving with his, his strange float and the attack of uh, <laughs> Ishikawa, Milano won 15 to, to 11. Ishikawa won the MVP award because he scored five points in the, in the tie break. But in my opinion, it was Mar the player of the game because it was more consistent along uh, all the game. It, it, it was pretty pretty entertaining to see all this roller coaster, but I think that. Milano wasted a chance to to secure a three point victory, and but Padova deservedly won at least one point. Yep, nothing to add to <laughs> the, to the two rounds because uh, it was almost in a in existence uh, of uh, yeah. in games. Uh, I I really do think that uh, Perugia now is uh, making a strategy because they have to face. Uh, uh, Chivitanova in the Champions League matches uh, and uh, well uh, they cannot uh, pre uh, pressure fast these games because they are so much in in stake uh, right now uh, I I believe if they have to choose they will choose to play uh, Champions League over the league games because you know you, you can lose uh, versus Chivitanova in Champions League and it doesn't matter. They will qualify uh, the first two. I, I believe it will be uh, Chivitanova and Perugia. But if you lose uh, like, like they lose uh, yesterday, 
or I don't know, two days ago, uh, they can put at risk the first play, which uh, is very important because it gave you advance in the semifinals and, and finals with the home court, home court advantage. I don't think that uh, don't really matter now because we are playing without uh, people. But uh, in in April, uh, most part of the of the fans and uh, presidents and uh, team members and players believe that this uh, situation with COVID uh, will be uh, controlled with the vaccine and stuff. But uh, yeah, the the first place in the regular season is very important. So they will choose to play with Civitanova at least uh, after the, the, the Champions League uh, matches. So yeah, uh, we will enter now in the ten, in the 10th round, yes? Uh, yeah, we are entering 11. The, 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 11th, 11. the 11th round, which at least in my opinion is the most interesting round so far in the championship. Why? Lube lost to Vibo Valentia 1-3 as a host. Monza won against Perugia 3-0 uh, and also Milano lost to Piacenza 1-3 and Verona to Padova 1-3. I believe that all four matches were very interesting in different terms. Uh, two matches are not played so far, Ravenna Trento and Cisterna Modena. Uh, my suggestion is Every one of us to comment on one match. I haven't, I haven't watched uh, Piacenza Milano and uh, and Monza Perugia. So, so I leave you the the choice to to comment on the, the other matches. So, maybe I can of course add something, but I can comment on Verona Padova if you want. You can start, Nicola. <laughs> Uh, I watched uh, Milano Piacenza uh, for okay. the left round. But before that, uh, I want to add that on the same day that Piacenza Monza was played, uh, Modena played against Padova as uh, an anticipation of the 18th round. And Modena won uh, 3 0. So at the same day, uh, before this, actually the 11th round, Modena and Padova played another round because they were the only two healthy team to, to play in, in the Liga. Lega Volley decided to anticipate the game that was held, I think, in February or, or January. Yeah. Play, so. uh, play what you can play, because that, that, that's, that's, the, that's the Polish recipe. They, they like, played a match from the 21st round or something, yeah. Yeah. And, as, and as the, I remember. And the points won by Modena uh, will not count at the end of the andata of the first uh, first round uh, because uh, it will be uh, they would set the grid for the Italian's Cup quarterfinal, and so those three points will not count for deciding uh, which which is the position of Modena in the in the table. Back to the eleventh round, uh, I watched uh, Milano Piacenza and. On paper, this match had everything to be an exciting, an exciting game. Uh, a very good team, Milano, and arguably the most uh, discontinuous team of the Superliga, Piacenza. I mean, you're thrilled because you don't know which version of themselves uh, Bernardi's <laughs> player will, will show <laughs> before actually watching the game. Um, the first set was full of mistakes at the beginning. Uh, then Piacenza took what it seems a pretty comfortable lead towards the end. Uh, been up at uh, 21-18, I guess. Uh, but then uh, Ishikawa had uh, his usual five minutes <laughs> and Milano overcome the gap and, and won the set. Then from the second set ahead, everything changed because uh, Ishikawa reception collapsed under Candelaro's flood serve and the Grozers bomb. And more important, in addition to it, Patri, Milano opposite, was forced out with a growing injury. And the uh, Patri exit was basically the end, uh, not just of the set, but also of the game. And the third, Piazza played the Brazilian opposite, Juan Weber, and he was terrible. I mean, he ended up with just three points, 19% attacking. Uh, so in the fourth, uh, Piazza played Mar as an opposite with Basic, uh, Basic and uh, Ishikawa as spikers. Nothing worked out for Milano. And they ended the game with just one ace and two blocks, 
uh, all of them in the first set alone. So Piacenza won easily in the last three sets and took the game. And despite not a great reception, uh, Baranovic did what uh, uh, Ronnie was saying. Uh, he used his attack in trio pretty well. And uh, especially Grozer nailed the, the points when they needed uh, the most. Once again, the German opposite was the MVP for Piacenza, the third time in the last four games. But in my opinion, it was Candelaro, the one who changed the game because he destroyed Milano's hopes from the service line. He served 25 times, at least seven times more than anyone else. And he also scored two aces. So a pretty easily win for for Piacenza, uh, but it couldn't have been different after Patria's injuries. Yeah, I I, I believe that uh, that Piacenza is a nightmare, or in the, at in the same time uh, could be a dream for bookmakers because you don't <laughs> know what they are going to do. I mean, that it's uh, but. I, it's it's interesting for me if they're going to have an even even performance in the in the in the near future if they're going to to start winning against the the weaker team on paper and uh, of course losing to the to the better ones or and how they are going to perform against the better teams let's say better on paper because the most interesting things for uh, things uh, uh, thing for me in, in this in this edition of the league is that teams are very even and you can you can't expect almost everyone can beat everyone with exception of uh, of Lube and Perugia but not anymore maybe and Piacenza also hired the uh, said uh, Musavi as a middle blocker so it had uh, one more weapon to their roster and we'll see how it works out because the Iranians so far in Italy uh, didn't switch uh, so well and Maruf was delusional <laughs> And Mirza Jampur, uh, Manavineja, the Sharifi, and none of them uh, left a trace in Italy. So we'll see what uh, said Musavi could do. Gafur was pretty pretty fine in Lube, maybe. Mm. Even, even even as a reserve player. Yeah, but, but he was injured, so you, you cannot expect yeah. that he play one 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 hundred percent to his full capacity. Even though I think it is a thing to play. International volleyball and other completely different pro volleyball. Uh, I I always put the Jiva example. Jiva was yeah, an yeah. excellent excellent player in Brazil and national team. But what did he want in Italy? What did he want in Russia? Nothing. So you can be serious uh, in a goat conversation uh, with uh, with only count the international titles because he had uh, Ricardo Garcia, which for me is, uh, was the best uh, setter uh, ever uh, uh, in the in the volleyball court. And you say, well, we, uh, really, Ricardo? Yes, Ricardo. He uh, win everything, almost everything in Treviso. He won everything in Brazil. So yeah, for me, he was uh, the best setter uh, in the world. Uh, but uh, uh, back in to that uh, to that uh, argument, yeah, Iranians. I don't know now with Alekno what he will. Yeah, let, let's let's put the news that Alekno is the new head coach officially today. Uh, uh, it's a strange decision, you know. Uh, I was expecting he to be more uh, attached to the Russian volleyball, but now uh, seeking another adventure uh, the only adventure that he had in all his career as a coach outside of uh, Russia was in France I believe when he he started to coach in something like Toulouse Tour. for two years Tours? Tours, Tours. Yeah. Tours. Okay. Tours yeah. yeah so yeah uh, back in, into the into the Louvre game that I was expected that, that, that lose Maybe you lose one set, maybe two, but uh, lose with uh, Valencia. Well, uh, is uh, I had luck that I didn't bet in this game, but you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see, uh, the Falco, excellent. Uh, Rosar, excellent. Uh, and Leal and Juan Torena, very not excellent. Very, <laughs> very. I will say Juan Torena in attack. 
percent, yes, and Leal uh, forty eight, and we we can forget we can forget easily the reception numbers because they were very, really bad. Uh, again, the the best player of Lube was Simon, but he didn't do anything special from service line. Yeah, two aces. Uh, two blocks, but he is a middle blocker. He can do it uh, all. And well, Rilicki play really solid, but it wasn't enough, you know. So, and at the end, uh, they could have uh, won those uh, the first and four, but like uh, happened in volleyball, everything it got decided in very tiny details, uh, and that uh, was all. Especially the, the third set that was uh, really um, safe. Uh, it's, I will say normal to to Valencia, very, very easily. So yeah, was a was a good victory for him for for them. Uh, I think it will be the best, the the most important win for that team this season because uh, in the in the previews. Um, in the previous podcast with uh, Bodan and, and you, Nicola, you say that Valencia could could be that team, uh, one of those those teams in the in the bottom of the table. But uh, this, uh, I don't know. I remember that, but <laughs> this uh, season is a roller coaster. You know, you you, you cannot uh, say uh, something final like uh, everybody. Is watching now, so yeah, Cucina Lube Civitanova lose uh, in home uh, and against uh, Valencia. If this lose comes from Toronto or Perugia, okay, Valencia very serious. Yeah, uh, I should mention that uh, I'm going to put uh, in the info box in the right corner this uh, our analysis of uh, Lube and, uh, and Vibo. And uh, I would like to reiterate here that uh, the serve of uh, Vibo was almost unbelievable in this match. Yep. But especially the serve of Thibaut Sar, who, who hit, I believe, 30 serves, which is almost one third of the, of the serves of uh, the, Vibo, the Vibo's team. So, but, but not only him. Uh, reversely, the, it was a big problem with Lube that their serve was not efficient enough and and most of the time uh, Vibo were able to, to organize their attack uh, pretty pretty well. So I believe that that, that was the main reason. Everything uh, uh, additional in terms of uh, Lube mistakes and uh, Lube's disability to uh, to score in easy situations is it, a little bit secondary but, but, but the serves of both teams were the, the most important point in this match. Uh, maybe we can go to Verona Padova because I watched this match with uh, with a very big interest. Um, firstly, of course, due to the fact that there are a lot of Bulgarians in uh, Verona. Uh, let's put another news uh, which we haven't, uh, we comment. weren't able to comment on Boye leaving Verona. <laughs> and now Verona uh, took um, Danish opposite instead of Bouye, Mats Jensen, uh, coming from the Danish championship, played in the in the N, uh, NCAA, the, the U.S. college championship, also in uh, U.S. Uh, UCLA, I believe uh, he played there. The interesting fact is that Mats Jensen, very similarly to to our friend from Toronto, Nimir Abdelaziz, was a setter, and because of the fact that uh, his height uh, increased too much, he was requalified re uh, as, as an opposite. He's a left-hander, and uh, this was his uh, first match uh, for Verona. And I believe that he played decently. Not a perfect match, it's, it's, not, it's not possible. But Verona, uh, surprisingly for me, lost this match. But surprisingly, only in terms of... Uh, uh, perception, preliminary perception of the match because it was an awful match for Verona. They played in terms of organization of the game, defense, free balls organization. It was it was really awful. It was a terrible, terrible game. 
Padova plays uh, played very uh, very well and especially excellent game for uh, Donček Stern, the, the the opposite of Padova, who scored uh, 31 uh, one points in this match. And uh, if I, I would like to um, to highlight one more thing of, of, of Verona is they they need a new libero for me at least. I, I don't think this uh, this uh, Bonami guy is able to to organize the defense, uh, but also help in reception uh, enough in order for Verona to be to be uh, good enough. Uh, that's uh, that's my uh, my perception in this match, and uh, I believe that uh, we you, you, we have Monza Perugia, of course, left. Yes, but before that, I will comment something about this Verona team. I really didn't like the way that they treat uh, the exit of Boyer, uh, especially when they say that he wasn't that uh, good when there are others or worse players in other teams like Vettori, for example, or another guys, you know. He wasn't the worst. I think they uh, they used that part because Boyer exit uh, not for performance uh, was for money. You know, as everybody knows, uh, there are certain teams in Italy uh, that are not paying their the players. This is normal because we are in crisis, COVID, etc., etc., etc. But saying that uh, an international player like Boyer. Uh, didn't meet the expectation when there are mm -hmm. other players in Verona. Maybe I don't know Jeski or let 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 not put uh, Asparukov in there because he he is too young. Maybe Danani uh, or or the setter. I don't know. But the the thing is, the only player that had been doing his job in that team is uh, Kasiski because he is a very good professional and a legend in the world of volleyball. And I think also he is the only guy that has been paying in that team because they 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 need to they they need Kaczynski there. I don't see uh, Verona winning without him. So yeah, uh, this is a this was a really a bad way to to end with with a, with a player. Uh, it, it was surprising for sure. And, and yeah, relatively surprising because you, you said well, Ronnie, when you talk about Kaziski, you said professional. No. And what people actually in Verona are complaining about Boyer was more of his behavior, not as a player, but as a professional. Uh, that's one, one of the main reasons that Boyer also get in trouble with France, if you, if yeah, you want to remember yeah. that. Yeah, but, but, you know, uh, having trouble with Engapé is normal, you know. You, <laughs> you, 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 you. So, yeah, okay. Engapé is more famous than him, so he was the uh, discarded piece from coach uh, Tilly. But uh, from the perspective of Verona, Matei is a... Is a it's a uh, end work, you know. He he is nothing yeah. to prove. He have a lot of wealth. He is uh, he he played for the love of sport of uh, sport at this point. But uh, Boyer uh, is young. I don't know. He maybe he needs money. Uh, maybe he wasn't. Um, uh, um, I don't know. Uh, willing to accept the fact that he is not uh, receiving his salary and decide to leave because. As you as you can see, he had an offer very very fast. So it, the problem was wasn't the team at all. It was the the money because you you want to play in Italy instead of Ar Arabia. But but if Italy did, doesn't pay you, what is the point if he doesn't play in the national team anymore? I I don't see why he can. Uh, he want to maintain his level if he no, he he isn't playing in the national team anymore. So, yeah, he decide. Well, I I done with this. Let's let's find some some other uh, club to to get money. I don't know uh, if he will do a litigation or something because uh, he he must to receive what what uh, he he work off. 
But um, yeah, that's that's it for Verona. I didn't like that they lose, especially with 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 Padova, that is uh, a really young team. But um, it is what it is. Sorry, <laughs> it, <laughs> you you were leaving. <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. I, I don't know how the contract was terminated. We don't know what what uh, exactly the relations between uh, uh, how they are fixed, or at least they will be fixed. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a strange situation. Uh, I was thinking about uh, talking about the ranking, but I don't think it's needed since the fact that some of the teams have only seven matches, like Ravenna and Trento, and uh, especially Trento and. Uh, and uh, some teams like uh, Padova only actually the only team uh, 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 Padova is the only team with 11 matches so they, they didn't miss much at least yeah, yeah they did because they played more than twice ah yes okay they, they did okay they did but they have but why is, uh, maybe, maybe maybe this match is included in the the, the match is included in the standing included because they, they didn't win any points so it's, it's, it's irrelevant yes uh, so uh, some some teams like Piacenza and Monza with ten matches, and the other teams like with eight and nine. But I I hope that until the end of the year they will be more or less more even. even. Yes, uh, I hope. Uh, can you talk about the Monza Perugia because oh there, yes, yeah, there, yeah. There, there is no way they will gonna yeah, yeah sir, <laughs> sir, 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 yeah. Maybe maybe it's better for the fans of Perugia not to to speak about this match, but go on. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, if you can't receive for... Uh, you will lose the game, for sure. I mean, uh, look the total of error that that uh, Perugia uh, make in the, in the set in reception. Eight errors uh, in reception. Uh, even the Libero, Colacci, uh, received for a 25% of positivity, of, of positive reception and 13% of perfection. So this is uh, really bad numbers for a, for a Libero, uh, especially when we are talking about the national team Libero. So yes, uh, Leon. Uh, make what he could, but he's coming from uh, quarantine. He also had COVID, you know. He he he, he couldn't he, he couldn't even train his body. Uh, Plotinski, I believe, was the the best player for this team because uh, I mean Char Sharon didn't play. Uh, he just entered the game and to do some some uh, plays in blocking. And the horse was uh, really bad. The good news for Perugia is that finally Atanasijevi is back. They, they, the team make uh, a statement. He, he's, he's really back. They are expecting to play as a starter uh, uh, next next round, and uh, they they will need it, especially in the Champions League uh, matches against uh, Civitanova. I don't think now uh, that Perugia uh, can make uh, good performance, but I mean they they beat Chivitanova before. They they know that Chivitanova is in good uh, as well, so everything can happen in that match. But uh, for the for the side of um, of Monza uh, was uh, really. Really nice to see Lanza in the other team beating uh, the the former team, and I think they 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 beat it. Uh, they beat them with an ace, mm. ace or or a, or a or a play. No, it was a pipe. I think. Okay. It was a pipe from Lanza. Yeah. The last point. Well, or something like that. He 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 was symbolic the, one. Uh, symbolic uh, one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, Addis didn't play good good either. Uh, 47, but uh, Galassi, the the setter, no, the setter, not the, the middle blocker. The middle blocker, I mean, 80, 85 percent against Perugia, three blocks. Uh, well, five, 15 points was the MVP. 
no, the MVP or, was Orduna, but, Orduna. but the, yeah, he the should real have gone MVP to, was yeah, Galassi. Definitely, okay. definitely. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was a revenge revenge match, I believe, for uh, for Lanza. For, um, for Monza and Lanza, not only I believe, not only not only Lanza, but Galassi, Galassi and Beretta are former uh, Perugia players. And Javonok, yeah. uh, I believe, also was wanted at least from uh, Perugia. So, so it was a uh, yeah former Perugia against uh, Perugia not in shape due to COVID. So I don't believe that is that much as a price taking into account the fact that Perugia Perugia didn't play almost a month, I believe. So, yeah, a month. So the the yeah. last game they played was on the 24th of October, and the, the next one on the 22nd of November. So yeah, basically, so it's, uh, and yeah. they. He, so much we time. had to underline that they play without Travista because the center was the yeah. backup of Travista Zimmerman, who he played a, for me a very bad game. I mean, you cannot expect to play as well as Travista was playing uh, at the moment, but I mean, you have to set the ball for Leon and and also work with the with the middle blockers, which was another of the problem because with Travista out. Uh, Einan was forced to play Ricci and Russo at the same time to maintain the number of three Italians on the field. Uh, so Sole didn't play for most part of uh, uh, of the game. It, yeah, that, that's interesting part. I, uh, I I didn't I didn't notice it. That, that due to due to the the minimum number of Italians on the court, you need to to to, to change your squad that that drastically. Okay. Uh, the next one is the volleyball lessons in Italian, I believe. Are you ready? Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, let's so, let's let's do the next part. So well, I, I will continue the rally we started last time. So after the serve, the reception, the set, uh, here comes the spike, which is schiacciata in Italian, and uh, the spike uh, needs to avoid the opposite side block, which is muro. In Italian, uh, literally wall, if you translate it in English. And uh, if the opposite time succeed in defending the spike, uh, they could set up a counter attack with it simply contrattacco in Italian. So the three words for today are schiacciata, muro, and contrattacco. Grazie mille. <laughs> uh, that was for today. I believe. I hope that the next time we are going to have more matches to comment, maybe after two or three weeks. And I hope that uh, you both, or and of course all the listeners and spectators, uh, will be keep will be healthy because the yeah tough times. Uh, okay, uh, stay healthy and uh, listen to us the next time. Listen to us in uh, uh, in Facebook, in uh, in YouTube in uh, Spotify and all the other platforms. And if you like our, our content, you can share it, like it. And uh, if you are such a big fan of ours, you can also help us in our uh, Patreon uh, profile. So uh, this is all from us. Uh, thank you. Bye-bye. Stay healthy and uh, listen, us, listen or watch us also the next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.